Hi, Sean Huckster from Huckster Labs. I'm here today to assemble an icebreaker pistol, a ray gun. Uh, the icebreaker ray gun is called that because it's based on an actual icebreaker that was designed in the 1930s, a pneumatic icebreaker, uh, an ice crusher that would, you put some ice in the top and you push a trigger and it comes out uh, the bottom, crushed. A beautiful piece of work that can be seen if you look it up. Um, I saw it in a museum once and I thought it was beautiful and I came home and immediately began to design this pistol. <coughs> I added, it didn't have the fin, I added a fin and I thought that was a nice homage to the Buck Rogers Flash Gordon era of, uh, of science fiction film. And I wanted to have a version that had replaceable nozzles so you could put different nozzles up front and if you really wanted to you could have different nozzles in the back but I don't have any of those yet. They're not interchangeable. Um, it uses uh, two magnets for a trigger and instead of a spring. And originally it was planned to have electronics. So I have a plate here, which for now has a, um, a little greebly in there, just to show that there's parts. But eventually I wanted to put batteries in there and then have a sound or, or light in here, which I have not yet done. Um, I designed this with the mind in, in mind of having a very heavy model since 3D plastic, uh, pl plastic printed in 3D is very light. There are heavy metal parts in here just to add weight, to give it some gravitas. And uh, today I'm assembling one from scratch. I'm going to put this aside and we're going to start assembling one icebreaker blaster. All the parts have been printed, I hope. If not, I'll soon find out. <coughs> um, I've pre-assembled just a couple of things. The, um, the gem faceted uh, emitters are printed with blue resin from a resin printer, but everything else has been printed on an FDM printer in layers in plastic, in ABS plastic. And we're gonna start just by tearing pieces apart. <coughs> this will be a longish video because the um, the process of cleaning up plastic is not terribly fun or short. It can be time consuming, painful. I cut myself a lot, uh, but the results in the end are quite nice. I haven't done one of these in a while, but um, it should be a matter of memory. I had my original in here a while ago. I took it all apart to make sure I remembered exactly how I put it together. And I realized, um, there, there's a lot of cleanup on these things because I've created these um, layered, divoted, uh, circular sections, which requires not only the, the removal of a layer here, but the inner layer here. And so I will try to get all this out. And all this was in aid of making sure the fit works better. You'll notice there are holes inside here. The holes are... Um, have multi-purposes. In this particular piece, there's five holes. Two are to put pegs in for alignment. And the, um, the main central one is for a large metal bolt that'll go down the center for weight. Has no purpose other than to add weight. And the two one to the side is to place carriage bolts for extra weight still. I determined um, when I was printing my own, I determined that the um, the side carriage bolts weren't necessarily important. They're, the main bolt is so heavy that it adds enough weight. And if anybody wanted to add more weight to it, they could definitely um, open it up and uh, add carriage bolts um, that will be prepared. And I'll show you. We are going to use a couple of those carriage bolts in the handle for balance. Because uh, if you put a major heavy metal bolt through the middle, you have no weight in the handle. It feels kind of strange. So I'm adding weight to the handle. Now this is difficult to, to, to clean up because this particular filament prints at a temperature that causes strict layer adhesion, which is important because if you don't have layer adhesion, you can get um, cracks in your layers and that's really not very nice. So you will notice um, Sometimes you'll see me quite struggling to get this stuff out. It will come out. And sometimes it'll fly off into the room. And you don't have to clean up all the way down. Um, if you can get these holes free, 
the carriage bolts will sit in there. Now the, re the reason the carriage bolts, um, I use carriage bolts is I, I, I designed a couple of toys a long time ago, a series of toys called the Werbles. And the Werbles, okay, let me show you what a carriage bolt is. First, this is a carriage bolt. It has a rounded head, a square underneath here, and then it's a bolt of different lengths. And what I do is I um, grind off the round head to give me um, a round metal piece. And I use that in the bottom of these little figures so they roll over, a bit like weebles. They can roll over, they wobble, but they don't fall over. And that's because they're heavily weighted at the bottom. Of course, the upshot is I get these carriage bolt sections that per fit perfectly in here for weight. And I'll go over that in a bit. So we have to clear out the section of the rafting that covers partly covers these holes. So, you know, using the chisels and tools and a glove, you'll notice I'm wearing a glove. Um, the glove is for protection because this stuff is sharp. And if you're not careful, you not only not only the sharp tools that you're using, but the plastic itself is so jagged when you pull it out that I mean, you can cut yourself very easily with this plastic. And that's something you really don't want to trust me. Um, and yet, I do it all the time. Okay. Seems to be a little slow, but this is one of the hardest pieces to clean up because of some of the interior stuff. And this actually has the, the hole for the what was supposed to be for the battery compartment later. Um, so that's got more to clean up than most of the other parts. Let's get at this. And the printers don't print ledges very well, so you have to have support rafting. And that support, that's the real hard part to clean out. Um, so for this has multiple ledges too, and uh, if it was one ledge, that'd be fine, but I have two ledges. So this is the ledge, inner ledge, and then there's the outer ledge that fits against the outer body, which is here, there you go. Now, um, I'm going to clean up first, and then I'm going to um, heat treat the stress. And you'll see I've already cut myself. That's going to happen. Um, it's just part of the hobby. If you're not willing to be cut, you're in the wrong uh, hobby. So, uh, you'll see I have an array of tools laid out. I may not use them all, but we do use a number of tools in cleanup. The most important is a chisel, but then also to grab parts and pull, you sometimes need a plier, and in this case, a, a cutter, because it has a needle nose and it grabs plastic rather nicely. And you may have to find, you may find yourself cutting the plastic as well. And because of a, a, the round hole is printed in this, this orientation, the round hole needs a, a raft on the top to support the upper portion of the hole as it prints. So um, you will find, I, I have curved chisels as well to get into round surfaces to make sure I get that rafting all off. And you will find that as you clean up, you get this uh, colored plastic stress. It's like it almost becomes white or lighter colored. And if you're working on interior parts, you don't need to clean that out. But if you're working on exterior sections, anything that's exposed to the eye, you need to clean that out. And we will find sections in here that we have to do this for. Now in here also, there are screw holes that I printed and that needs support as well. So you pull the uh, little support rafting pieces out if you can. If you can't, it doesn't matter too much. There's enough space for the screw to to just go in without these um, pieces interfering. But it's designed to come out. It's designed so that the screw goes into the hole clean without any material inside the hole. So if you can't get it out, it's fine. But if you can, it's best to get it out. So this uh, side is the side that prints up, so there was no cleanup necessary. It prints <coughs> in this orientation, so we needed rafting here, we needed rafting in the holes here, and in this section here, plus the, the main raft. This is support, this is raft. The raft holds the piece down to the bed, and the support supports pieces that are printed vertically but have an overhang that you know, gravity would make it fall if it was printing without support. So that's part one. The other parts um, should not be quite so hard to clean up. Um, 
Actually, look, I printed two of that one. I don't need that one. Isn't that great? That's one piece less to clean up. Uh, then this is the front section. The rafting usually comes off fairly easily, and then you take the chisels to get the, uh, the supports off. And this is much like the other one. You have to clean up this uh, overhang support, this ledge support. Um, you may ask why I printed a ledge, and uh, I have to think that at the time, I didn't realize how much more difficult the ledge uh, removal is. And I thought the ledge was just a way to make some space between the two surface edges. But I'm thinking in retrospect, and I, I don't know if I'll ever change this or not, but it probably could just print flat. And when the pieces go together, it'll still look perfectly joined. This ledge space is probably not even needed. And of course, it just adds more work for me, but for now, it doesn't matter. And this piece cleans up fairly well. Now, as the holes in the fin get finer and finer, you have to take much more care uh, ripping out the supports because you do not want to destroy the holes, the circular shape of the holes. So this tool is great because you can actually cut the plastic where pulling might destroy the hole and just carefully pull out these pieces until you get the smallest hole. And then for cleanup you can, well, you can use a curved chisel for the larger hole to get the support out of the middle because you can see there's a little bit of plastic in there that one's not tight enough a circle I have other chisels as well uh, and then if that doesn't work you can use a, um, a screwdriver or something just to push out the little bits of plastic that might end up in the hole that kind of ruin the illusion that the hole is nice and circular so there's a bunch of tools you can use there you can like just put a tool in and rotate it around and believe it or not that's all the cleanup that one needs that one is um, done. And then the final section of the body is the tail where the fin ends. Again, this will be fairly simple cleanup as well. I, I, I left the, I, I cleaned up the hardest part first. I usually do that because if you leave the hard part for last, it really kind of, it, it, it's kind of soul, soul destroying. Um, get the hard part out of the way and then make the rest of the job easier is usually my philosophy in working on everything I do. And believe it or not, that came off nice and clean. So, again, we don't want to destroy these circles. You should be very careful pulling these out that you don't rip good plastic or you don't bend or mutilate any of the good stuff and just pull out the supports. And these actually can just pop off usually by pulling downward uh, depending on the strength of the part around it. And again, take the curved chisel. Just In this case, you just kind of scrape a little bit. All you really want is the residue of the rafting and the support to leave the hole. <clears throat> and that's that one done. Now we have the grip. Let me just wipe away some of these parts. Now we have the grip. The grip will be easy to take off as well. It's literally just one part of rafting. And then a little bit of cleanup in here because the grip has a, a gap for the trigger and the trigger gap is kind of intricate because it holds a magnet in the grip and then holds uh, the, the trigger itself which has a small um, clip to hold down the trigger in the, in the right location and then the trigger itself has a magnet and when it all comes together and this, this is the the hardest part of this one is getting this stuff out of the middle. When it all comes together, you uh, you have space for the trigger and for the, the magnets that the trigger has to go into. All right, that's cleaned up. Uh, that one's done. Now, this part is the uh, battery compartment cover which as you know by now does not actually have a battery in it yet but I put in fake workings to make it look like some sort of science fiction gear so the machinery that powers the, the lasers energy accumulator I guess and again this one is fairly easy to clean up you just have to be very careful around the, the circular holes which form part of the fin and yes the fin as it goes along the body is made up of four separate sections 
And because of the precision of 3D printing, you can generally put the four together and it'll form a nice smooth fin. Of course, when you get in close enough, you'll see the seams, but that's the same with everything. Even like professionally manufactured things have seams, they just try to hide them as best they can. And so we test fit this, and there it is. The reason we test fit it is because any leftover rafting or support needs to be cleaned out. And if it doesn't close properly, you know there's some of that in there. This is the um, grip pummel, the very bottom of the grip, which goes in with a screw. There's a screw hole here. Um, this could have printed as part of the grip, but the reason I didn't do that is I really wanted to have weights in the grip. So, again, this is two-tier ledge. The bottom is the raft and the top is a ledge here, and so I have to go in and clean this out as a second layer, which can be quite difficult because the supports print um, a diagonal um, buttress or, or um, scaffold. And believe it or not, that one little layer of plastic going all around is incredibly strong. It keeps that shape very well. And that makes cleanup a little bit more difficult. But, you know, it's not too bad. This will come off in a second. And then you just got to clean up where there's some raft because this has to, to connect absolutely flat to another piece. And that will fit on the top of the, the grip like that. So it's another piece done. Um, I believe that's the main body. Uh, here's the trigger. I've just pulled the trigger away from the, the, the plastic. And here's the piece that goes inside the body. We're going to put the body together first. And then we're going to assemble some uh, power nozzles. I have printed a whole bunch. I don't know if I'll go through the uh, assembly of all of them. Um, because there's a number of them. I made this so that it has modular uh, power nozzles, all of which are different, some of which are similar to each other, but still different. I didn't even print all the ones that I make. There's about five or six here, whereas I do like maybe eight or nine. And I thought that it wouldn't, we wouldn't need to do all of them. I'm, for this um, construction video, I may only do one or two. The important ones being the, 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 the one that normally comes with it with all of its uh, rings, because it's so, you know, Flash Gordon science fiction-y. And then one or two with the, um, with the resin printed gems, which are power crystals, of course. So that's the trigger. I cleaned off the raft, and because the trigger has a, a, um, a pin on either side, there must be some printing up here to support the trigger, and that is one of the harder parts to get off. And then there is a hole in the back there where this plastic comes out and we will see that has to come out and the bladed cutters are the best way to pull that out and that's completely done but you do notice that when you rip away plastic you get a white coloration and we have a solution for that i'm going to show you that in a few minutes as soon as all the parts are done and i start assembly i'm going to do a heat cleanup this is the Greebly. Greebly is a term, or Greeble is a term that uh, was coined during the production of science fiction ships for TV and movies. Greebles are just fake detail. You see them all over spaceships. And so I did the same. I made a bunch of Greebles. It's just, I mean, really, when you look at it, it's just like wires and tubes and whatever, right? It, it's just fake detail. It doesn't matter. And that's done. I can take my gloves off now. Now, assembly. Uh, the first thing I want to do is assemble the body pieces. So I take the three pieces of the body, put them together, move everything else aside. Since the handle is separate, it'll go up separately, and I'll do that after. But for now, <clears throat> these three pieces are here, and they're fairly simple to put together. Um, they, they, they form together more or less like that. And that's the body of the, the gun. Uh, before I do... I am going to look at it and make sure everything that needs, that sees the air is cleaned up. And by clean up, in this case, I mean heat treated. And so what I have is a, a heat gun. And what we do is we very lightly, and we need gloves for this because it's a hot process. <clears throat> we heat the gun up and we very lightly go over the plastic, very lightly. What you want to do is go over it multiple times and let it cool. Don't, don't leave the gun on any part for too long because it will melt and warp the plastic. So we let it heat up a little, and then 
we run the gun over the parts. Now we don't care too much about what's in here because here is never going to be seen by the user. But the end of the end of the um, fin will be seen because when you pull the battery pack off, you might see that. And of course, the top part of the holes will be seen. So you want to get that cleaned up as much as possible. And the goal is to get rid of all of that white, discolored plastic stress. And you don't, like I said, don't leave it on one area too long. You run it over, you pull away, you run it over again. You do this multiple times, and you get rid of the plastic without warping it. You get rid of the. Uh, the stress marks without warping the plastic in any way. And this one. And especially where plastic is very thin, you want to be very careful. This circular hole here is incredibly thin. Do not leave it on that hole for very long or it'll warp the pieces. And I believe, other than right there, that should do it. And I don't have to do it for the handle because the handle has no exposed parts that are stressed. Uh, but I do have to do it for this. And I notice, and here's where, you know, uh, a, a good careful look afterwards comes important. There's a little tiny amount of support there that might prevent the battery part case from opening properly or closing properly. So we test fit that again. It's kind of nice. Oh, and of course this piece. This piece is exposed to players as well, or to the, to the user, the owner. I say player for cosplay. You definitely want to make sure that all the exposed parts on this piece are cleaned up. There isn't a lot, but there are the holes and there's the, the back part of the fin. That's the body. Now I can assemble. To assemble the body, this metal rod, which is just, just, just some, a metal bolt with a, a metal bolt with a nut on it, uh, but it's very hefty. It's it's heavy metal. <clears throat> so this goes through the body, and not only use it's, it's not only used to support the body, the construction of the body, and keep it together. It adds that lovely weight. Um, if anybody wanted the gun with no weight, it can certainly be assembled that way as well. There are pegs and connectors that can take glue really easily. But I like the idea of, of a bolt. I can take the thing apart if I need to, which means I can add electronics or whatever. Um, when it comes to the weight, there are... Um, I found that this bolt in the main body is enough, and then two of these carriage bolts for the grip. However, if we really want to, there is space for carriage bolts along this part of the body, both front and back. So you really could add a lot of weight here. I don't think I'm going to. I'm going to just use the single bolt. Uh, the bolt goes in through the front and should pull through cleanly. There is, um, I should explain, there's a gap in here that fits this head perfectly and it goes down to about here. And then, of course, that acts as a, a wrench, so you can't turn this thing. So I can put the bolt on quite easily without having to have a wrench on this side. It's its own wrench. So let's drop that in. And then pull it all the way back down. And you see that's a fairly, length, a fairly long bolt. It covers the entire length of the gun. Then you put in the um, this section here. This peg fits this hole. So that's self-aligning in a way so you get these in like so and the peg and the hole fits together you pull the bolt again so you see that's nice and aligned and then the final section and now you can just leave that um, like this but the problem is I didn't do uh, a peg and a bolt system for this piece because they're both printed upward making a bolt and peg kind of harder to clean up. So what I did is I printed um, pegs to fit in here. So much easier to do it this way. You leave a hole, you print a peg to fit the hole, and you have two of these. And then that snaps into the holes that you have aligned in the body for a perfect alignment. Um, and now, we're ready to uh, assemble. Except I think I have a too long bolt here. That bolt's not quite supposed to be that long. Do I have a shorter bolt? You know what? 
I'm gonna proceed anyway and pretend that that is a shorter bolt for now and I'll fix it later. But for the video, uh, I can show you how it's done. Now, you put the bolt in here and then at some point you notice, oh, my fingers can't reach in there to tighten it. So what I did is I created a wrench and it's a simple tool that just attaches to this and you just keep turning until it tightens. And then you can really crank it tight. And when you hear when you hear a little bit of cracking, you realize you're you're stressing it a little bit. So don't do too much of that. And that is the body. Like I said, I'm going to replace this with a slightly shorter bolt. Uh, it only needs to be about an inch shorter, and I have one. I just couldn't find it. Um, the reason this bolt has to go is because uh, the end cap goes into this gap. So that's the body done. We'll put it aside carefully. And we're going to tackle the grip next. Do we need some heat treating on the grip? We don't need to, but because somebody might take this apart in the future, I'm going to treat it anyway. You should be doing with this gloves on because the heat gun is very, very hot. But as long as you're aiming it away from your hand, I guess it's fine. And don't do it all in one pass. Do it in multiple passes. And there's a little bit inside here that you want to make sure the user doesn't see. And for that matter, the cap as well. The user might take that off. So rather than show them the stress, we clean it out. And that's done. All right, the next part is the trigger, which of course also has to be heat treated because the whole, the whole bottom surface of the trigger is, is stressed. So for this, we use glove, but we also use uh, tweezers because this piece is smaller. So we hold it like so, and then we take the heat gun. I'm hoping you can see the, the stress go away here. Pass after pass, not, not too long than any one pass, until all of the heat stress is gone. And then where the tweezers is holding it, you see a little bit there as well, go in there and now you're done. That's done. So <coughs> the grip is next. As I mentioned before, the grip, um, the trigger goes down into the grip fairly easily. I made sure there's lots of room. And of course it works, but the, the, pig, the peg for the trigger would push upward like that. And so I created a little clip that covers that. And when this is up against the gun, this clip is forced down and forces the trigger to remain in place. But first for the trigger, we have to put in the magnets. So how, we, how the magnets work is we take two very strong magnets, rare earth magnets. One goes in the trigger and one goes in the grip. So it doesn't matter which order you put them in as long as they are uh, repelling. So one has to go into the, the gun grip like so, into the trigger. And the other goes in the handle, but not like that. We don't want that because that'll pull the trigger back. What you want is to reverse it, turn it around so that they repel each other. Like, that becomes a, a spring. And the reason I didn't use a spring is, frankly, springs are noisy. So this has to go into the grip oriented um, in such a way as to uh, always repel. Now, to do that, you know, let me see if I can do this way. Yeah, okay. So I have a little um, magnetic grip here. And this allows me to push the magnet into, there's a hole in there, it's hard for you to see, I think. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of crazy glue on here, or super glue, just to hold the magnet in place, just in case. Now it shouldn't matter because the magnet, two magnets in the holes, even if the holes were loose, the magnets would uh, repel each other and just be forced to remain in place. Like each magnet is pushing itself into the into the gap into the aperture that holds it rather than out of it so i really don't need any kind of glue or any kind of um anything to support the thing staying in place it'll just do it and when you put this in the trigger acts like a spring and you can even hear the, the two magnets touching click 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 and that's almost finished except the little clip here because this can still pop upward we don't want that so we have this little tiny piece that holds the pins in place and that just kind of fits in with with friction it can be glued in place if you want to but if you want to ever take this apart in the future you don't want to do that and it's not going to pop up during normal play because this piece is 
flush up against the body and that has nowhere to go. Uh, now, I will put carriage bolts in the handle because I believe balance is important. And so I push two carriage bolts in here and these don't need to be glued, but you can glue them if you like. Uh, you can, they go in that kind of with friction, but you can glue them or you can put a little tape in there, it doesn't matter. And then you take the pommel and attach it here. And that fits in with friction as well, but I don't rely on friction for most things. This requires a screw, at which I will screw into place with a small screwdriver. until that screw stops. And there you go. Now you have a working trigger. That attaches to the body, like so. And then you have four screws to fit the handle into the body. This makes for a nice clean construction in a way that you can also take the thing apart for whatever reason you might need to. Sorry about that. Four screws and start screwing in place. And, and, and I have this long extension on my screwdriver because uh, the grip is designed in such a way as there's no room for the body of the screwdriver to go. So you need a long screw shaft. And I have a ratchet screwdriver, thankfully because this, this part alone can be fairly tedious. And you just keep screwing that until it won't go in any further. And I know four screws was overkill, but I want a strength. Keep going. I have to say, one of the more tedious parts is the screwdriver. I wish I had a power driver that would work this well on this thing. I kind of do, but I found with a power driver, um, you can easily break the plastic because the power driver is a bit too strong. And even at the weakest setting, ABS plastic can break fairly easily. So I'm just going to do it by hand with a ratchet screwdriver, which is hugely helpful. Come on, buddy. Right. Two more to go. Okay, we got the handle on. I skipped ahead a bit. Um, the Greebly is now in place. It just glued it in place and the caps connect. So that's done. The body of the gun is now completely finished. And now we're going to look at a couple of the front nozzles. We're going to assemble, uh, for now, just the first part of the nozzle. The the, the the, the one that I showed with the original pistol here. So this, this, this was, uh, consists of a base with four rings and a nose tip. And we're gonna assemble that with crazy glue. Uh, these rings actually snap into place nice and firm already, but I do put a little glue in there to make sure they don't come out. That's the, why well, I call this the base emitter, but then I'm gonna also possibly put together a few more depending on the length of the video and how interesting it is. So we'll see right now. Let's do that part. So here are the silver parts and the cranberry red parts needed for the front nozzle. The, this will come off the raft real easy. A lot of things do when they're printed just flat. There's no problem getting them off the, off the, the rafting at all. And since they didn't require any supports, there's no intricate cleanup. Um, depending on the heat I printed at, the, uh, the layer adhesion drastically affects how uh, easy it is to get pieces off the raft. This one is a little harder than the silver, but not too bad. Again, I printed the color here hotter so that uh, the main body pieces wouldn't show cracks. Uh, okay, so um, this piece will fit into the nose like so, and we'll just start applying rings. I'm going to friction fit them first just to test. Now also these have the stress on the back. We're going to have to clean those up first. Yeah, you know what? I don't think I need glue for these. So I'm going to just clean these up now. That means grabbing, turning them all over so I can see the stress. Grabbing my tweezers and turning on my 
heat gun. Now, sometimes you use the heat gun like a gun and sometimes you use it as a base. I'm gonna use it as a base here. Let it heat up a little. And then you run the part over it like so. Look at it, see how much stress has been removed. Fair amount. And you keep going, quick layers, not too much at a time, until all the stress is gone and you don't see any the white parts. Now, as you notice, when you remove the tweezers, you'll see stress there too. So you got to move it and then go back and clear off that bit. And then do that with the other three pieces. Again, not too much on one spot. Get in and get out multiple times is much safer for the part. And that clears out all of the plastic stress. And that's done. You don't have to do the bottom of the silver because there's no visible plastic stress, but you can if you want. Just run it quickly over there. But like I said, the, the silver doesn't, doesn't really require it usually. Certain colors um, require it. Black certainly requires it. Any bright color will show plastic stress. Silver is much um, closer to the color anyway, so it doesn't show a lot of stress. So you take the ring, there's a rounded surface, and then there's a flat surface, almost like a, the, the cross section of a wing. And you place that here and you jam it in. And believe it or not, this will fit friction fit. You do not need to glue that. The way I designed the tolerances is very tight. So there's no reason to glue it. You can if you like, but there's no reason to necessarily glue it. These um, are all tight enough for my benefit, but I am going to, just because I'm selling this to somebody else, I am going to apply glue just, just a little bit to make sure it does not come off. And I'm just talking about just a very small amount. And it's just to keep it in place. Like I said, it's friction fit anyway. It's very unlikely to slip out of place. And that's fine. And then the top nozzle for that is here. And that just fits in like so with a little bit of glue. And this is a bit looser piece and that's my fault. I haven't really adjusted the tolerance of this piece to make it friction fit as tightly. So you just kind of get it in there and you make sure it looks even. And then you set it down for the glue to harden and dry, and then you don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, this emitter I've already done. This was literally just one piece with uh, a resin gem that I designed, blue resin. And the blue resin is designed, uh, well, it's a clear blue resin. So if you take a flashlight, it lights up rather nicely. And while I don't put electronics in here, Anybody who buys the gun or whatever can put their own electronics in through the gaps and holes that I've left. And uh, I use a vending machine bubble for the cap, and that's a full nozzle right there. So that's also designed to fit right into the, into the, into the hole. So that's another nozzle. And all of them that I have are, are designed to fit in the front. Uh, this one, let me see, I'm gonna take this one is designed to hold a smaller gem which I've already placed in a black cup so that'll fit in here and then again if you want to shine a light through it it glows rather nicely and literally that's just uh, a little bit of glue to hold the cup in place and of course a bit of glue to hold the uh, resin into the cup that's another nozzle done so that's three uh, then I get a little more complicated. Uh, I have two nozzles that have um, pointy arms. Let's do one now. This one 
I uh, didn't put a hole in here. Or did I make version that has a hole? Yes, I did. Uh, the original version didn't have a hole because I didn't plan to put electronics in. Um, but some people want electronics, so I, I redesigned it to um, from not having a hole to having a hole. That way, when the 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 gem is placed in place, it will um, allow you to shine a light behind it to backlight the gem. And so that's like so. And now there are two nozzles that I've done with this, and each one has arms. Let me move this out of the way so you can see better. This one has arm, ar will have arms, and those arms are printed here. So I'm going to pull these off the, the raft. There are two separate arms, sets of arms. One has a pointed front and the other doesn't, and there's a reason for that. When you pull these off the raft, and they come off fairly easily, I think. Uh, these are meant to be standalone, pointed fingers, sort of tips-like, and they, um, as soon as I get this off of here, will just form a trio of spikes onto, whoa. Sorry, my power just went out. Well, that was fun. My power went out while I was filming. Okay, let's get back to it. We'll take this uh, three and, uh, Pull them off the raft. I blew a circuit breaker. I'm running too many things, I think. Which is interesting. I'm not running my 3D printers. I'm only running here a computer and a fan. But it's quite possible that the um, heat gun overstressed the, the circuit breaker. Okay. Clear off some of this stuff. Now, this one is designed uh, to literally fit into these little gaps that I've created here. Just a little bit of glue in three of these. Just a bit, you don't need much. And then they go into this very tightly. All my tolerances are designed to fit real nice, so there's not uh, a lot of give or leeway. And then you have what what looks like a, 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 a tri-fork tip, sort of. Do a little thumb cleanup of a few bits uh, that are rafting that are left around. And that is actually pretty good. Um, and again, you can see that the blue crystal lights up real nice in there. Now I did a version of this that's a little different, so that's four. I'm going to show you another version now, that's this one. This uses the same base, and it uses the, um, it uses uh, the similar arms, not exactly the same, but similar. And they um, don't have the sharper finger up top, and there's a reason for that, and I'll show you in a second. Get these off the raft. like the others. Come off fairly clean. Sometimes when you're cleaning up, however, something goes wrong, and that just did. The good news is, with, um, uh, with, with ABS plastic, or any kind of 3D printed plastic, because they're printed in layers, if you break a piece, it can go back together so very easily that you don't even know it broke. Um, layers like to um, have shape to the layer, so when you break a layer and you put this back onto the layer, it goes back exactly into place, just like it never happened. And if you do it right, you can't even see that there was ever a seam there. But it does emphasize that cleanup is not a, a, an undangerous process. Cleanup can indeed be destructive. Uh, okay, and then this third piece is a cap at the top. Let me... I've left a, a gap here. There's a, a, a ledge here. That is because this one uses two crystals. I'm going to use a curved chisel to get in here. Sometimes a curved chisel is the exact right tool for cleanup because you need to get into a curved area. And then when you pull it up, uh, it's very difficult sometimes though. 
And this you kind of do need to clean because you're going to lay down another one of those uh, little black um, cups with a gem in it. And again, a piece has separated from, I'm going to put it back in. Put it back so that you don't even notice it was gone. And if you do this correctly, it's invisible to the eye. The layers just join back on perfectly. So that's that. Four, five pieces there, and then I need two gem cups. One will go on the base. Enough glue there. Yeah. And now, just like the previous one, because it's exactly the same base model. You put a little bit of glue into the holes that are meant for the arms. And put the arms in place, just like the other one. Push snap. Slide. Slide. And you see it's a very much like the other, except the others have, have these little fingertips on them. This doesn't, because I'm now going to put a gem here. Now well, you can't see through this gem. This gem won't, won't have any light coming through it, unfortunately. Uh, and then a little glue in the arm places here, just like down below. And this tip will go into place just like this. What you do is we're going to hold the three fingers in a little bit because they there's a little bit of uh, a tolerance here where they swing out a little. So once that's once that glue is set, that is now the third or sorry the fifth nozzle. And for now, that's all the nozzles I'm going to show. But there are two or three others that I did not print for this project, and. Um, That is the complete gun. So this will fit in here, and any nozzle you want will fit right in here. So you can have that guy in there, or any of them really. And they're kind of tight. You do have to kind of turn them sometimes to pull them out, but they're designed that way. Just be careful when you put them in that you don't break these fingers, of course. And they have little grips on the side so that you can pull them out fairly easily. Again, they're very tight. I've designed them to be tight. And that gives you some flexibility for the kind of nozzle you want to display in your gun. This is, of course, is the standard, and that is a completed project. So from Huckster Labs, see you next time. Bye-bye.